September 1st and 2020. And this means we're basically at the final quarter uh, of the game. And I think that that's when you call in the major players, right? Because for sure, today I really want you to look into yourself, you know, really, really breathe into yourself, smile into yourself, and really see who you are. And find stability in that, you know, trust the process, trust yourself and remove yourself from the frenzy and the craze and the hysteria and the overstimulation of, of this reality that is, is at times of this environment at times that's, that's producing a lot of anxieties and sureties and this all being because people are in a little bit of fear about what's going to take place here on the planet and not just even what the future is going to be like, but what is, what is tomorrow going to be like? And even how am I going to get a better today? How am I going to get a better now? And that makes things very relevant because it means that whatever you're going to achieve, it's right now in this moment. And if you can take control of the moment, then you can take control of your entire existence. I also, uh, knowing that this is the final quarter, I do personally want to make an intention to spend more time. At least uh, if I could get in an hour a day with, you know, just being here for the tribe and really bringing any kind of clarifications that can be made to even what I've presented, uh, what's being presented. Because if we're going to be a community, and if we're going to be a tribe, this also means that we're going to have to be able to come together and develop some type of consensus. Uh, and what that means is, is that means that we need some type of blueprint for what we're engaged in if we ever intend to make any progress. There's no major institution, especially that has, has stood the test of time, that did not utilize these basic principles of how you grow based on learning from those who know and even opening up a space for theories and guesswork to begin to also produce and nourish new thought. It's important that we understand the difference between those two sanctums because when we teach our children, we need to teach them exactly what they need to be learning based on the experience that, that we as their, parent, their parents have had. And, but we also want to give a space for creativity and for us all to learn from the uniqueness of those that are coming forth and see what they do with the highest truth, with it, which is unlimited. So, yeah, I believe that this is going fine. I haven't seen, I kind of have one screen here and I have a chat, so yeah. So the chat looks good. It seems like everyone can hear me. Uh, if someone can just type in, yes, you're coming through clear. We didn't get any breakups. I can continue with this. I'm gonna close down some windows to let it buffer a bit more. I don't see anything on YouTube, but hey, that's what it is, but I do have a good copy over here so I can always load it later. So I want to bring some maxims in here for a moment because we do need pillars to stand on. If we're going to go all the way to these heights, the last thing that I really would want to do is fall. If I'm going to take off this plane, the last thing I really want to do is crash. I want to have the complete celebration of the entire process of this joy that I'm entering into. And for that, since this is the universe and the universe is a university and this is all about lessons, I really have to have some guidelines. I need a compass to tell me, you know, what, what's what. You know, that's, that's what the parents do for their children. This is not something that needs to be reinvented. It's already instilled in nature, which is the true reflection of us. And what we experience, especially when we're coming into a household that has some type of balance to it, or at least 
is reflecting the principles of the balance that our ancestors gave us because it's not just that they're right. <clears throat> I'll say this. It, it's not just that, you know, somebody can be right. Right is not really contingent on what the person is doing. Right is a principle that's based on the laws of, of nature. And that's the, that's the deepest part of all this. What we have is we have this intuition. And as long as our intuition hasn't been tampered with, then it's going to tell us and give, it's going to be the bearing for us that has been instilled in us from our DNA, what our ancestor gave us of what technically right and wrong is. And I'm talking about if you plunge your hand into lava, you're going to draw back a nub. This is the right and wrongs that I'm talking about. I'm talking about higher laws and principles. I'm not talking about just, you know, the dramas, even though they are great arbitrators for the drama because it's so much bigger. These elements and these powers are so much bigger than your petty dramas at times. So you can apply them there and they still will hold because they stretch down all the way into the unseen, these maxim and these principles. And one of those is actually about unity, that unity in a total, a total awareness, if you know really what unity is, you realize that no one can ever stop unity or change unity. It is a maxim. It's not something that we can choose if we're going to be unified and if we're not going to be unified. That's not your choice. That, that decision is too powerful to put into the hands of beings that change from time to time and shift and move about like the water and like the ocean. That unity would have to be something that is hard-coded inside, inside of the construct, and it is. If you sit in your wisdom right now and you think, can we really separate ourselves from anything? If you know metaphysically how deep everything connects, the obvious answer is no. We're always going to be unified. So that's really the context today for me of even this build that we have to go into is it's not at all a choice to divide on the highest metaphysical levels. What there is, is, is there's a choice that comes in discernment where all the dramas play out, i.e. life, earth, for you to learn a lesson about something that's, that's even, it's like the road to the awareness of what unity really stands for, what harmony really stands for, why they show a spectrum when they start talking about this kind of stuff and why they talk about a foundation and why they talk about, you know, the heights, you know, what even though we're all together here, as I mentioned, inside of this, this bubble of consciousness called Earth, and we're all connected here and we're all interacting, that doesn't mean that, let's say somebody else is a race car driver, I may not want to be a race car driver. And if something happens where all of a sudden I'm supposed to, let's say, for instance, in this case, like race car drivers, I'm supposed to get into that, like, Everybody, some people like basketball. I rather play rather than watch somebody. However, if it starts getting to a point where, I guess what I'm saying here is, is that we have to have these pillars. We have to have these beacons to show us, okay, here your, here's your guide and here's where you can go with this. Here's where this can, can take you. This is what can be done. And so that way, we're not just like going around in circles and circles. It's like now, it's like I'm just engaged in watching everybody else and thinking about what everybody else is going to do and, you know, like wondering what they're going to do with the reality and how am I going to prepare myself for the reality. Then that's, that's no way to live. This whole external thing has is, is, is been gone too far. It's time for us to start making the journey back within. And that's why I said, and within you'll find everything. So you'll stop trying to make sense of the small little pieces that are displaying themselves, especially on the TV. Like people have gotten into this thing where they think that everything that's going on is gonna be on TV and everything that you should know, somebody's gonna be at the mall telling you. And that's why you're here to explore because you're going to need to go and find out a lot of this yourself, but you're going to need some kind of map. So that way, when you get on your journey, you don't get misled. 
that's really what the universe is really about and the cosmos and the compass is about giving you a blueprint so when you do go and explore infinity that you don't end up in a lava pool you don't end up following a being beings that are still in that, it, it, still trying to uh to find their own way you have something that because that's that's the gift that's really what our mother gave us is this compass this intuition this instinct to know where we are and also when I say our mother I'm summarizing it because we all came out of a womb and and I'm saying that our mother has all of this this data this information this DNA this wisdom and she stores it all into these components that we call intuition distinction discernment etc and that's what she gives. And, and the ancient knowledge says, the first is a gift. The second, you must earn. So it literally is meaning that this intuition, if you look at the word, is like, you know, you know what tuition is, right? You, your payment for entering into the university. So when you're entering into the universe, the payment is technically your intuition, how well can you develop your intuition so that way, you know, in this whole process that you end up being able to go through with this and complete this, this uh, lesson that we're here to learn. So what is the lesson? And as I said, if we look to the blueprint instead of everything else, then we can easily see the truth to, okay, when a child comes in the world, what is the, if they still have some balanced parents, what is the parent really trying to teach the child? Really, what I call the two Ds, which make a circle, discipline and discernment. That's pretty much the whole of parenting. You want to, because the child is coming out wild, so you want to let them know, hey, you can't just run out in the street. See, now everything is like this paradox because somebody will jump in, we need to let them be wild, we need to let them be. You know, that's even Montessori, you know, and, and it's like, yes, but in a certain context, there's a certain order to all of that. And when we say be wild and free and have the freedom to make your decisions or, or you know, to, to have the ability to make your decision, let me <laughs> work with my verbiage here. There's still, let's say, for instance, uh, there's a frequency f uh, field that you're being given to make those decisions in. Why? Because if the entire everything was completely open to everyone, for sure you would get beings entering into those spaces that they weren't prepared and ready to honor and to respect what's going on in that space. Meaning that even to this day in every single, in, in many sanctums that you see, who's allotted to come into that space is really based on their resonance and vibratory frequency and how much they've earned to be in that space. But if you're going to let, let's say, someone who's abusive to children inside of a kindergarten class, now some, something has come out of order. So do you see the purpose of the order? It's not to hinder you. It's actually to allow that you can be able to do what you're doing, and that, but you still respect the highest laws, which is you don't tell really anybody unless you are positively sure to go and do something that may bring them some detriment. Because that's the role of the one who has to wear that mantle and wear that, really, it's almost like a burden. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. It's like to have the responsibility of the elder, to have to tell the tribe, this is the direction that we should go. That elder's got to spend most of their time really in the meditation and the treatment and in the, in the treatments and the ancient knowledge and the connection with themselves, et cetera, making sure that where they're telling the tribe to go is actually where the tribe should be headed because the tribe is trusting, trusting that that being is, is saying and has the connection to say where we need to go. And that's where the order is. Now, you see what the chaos is, is when there is none of that. There is no, okay, this person teaches Tantra. This is, this is the laws of Tantra have been there for a thousand years. If somebody's coming, gonna come and add to that, 
They need to hit that area where we entertain new ideas, but the laws themselves are already in play. So it actually allows us to form what we would say is a community and tribe. That's why this whole thing, I, I, I came in 10 years. I haven't been alive longer than the conscious community has existed. But I, so I entered into the conscious community and what I found is that the temples were crumbled. Metaphysically, even linguistically, like the temples of, and the pillars of knowledge have fallen and what remained was just the artifacts of what <laughs> was, what was. And so I started picking up those artifacts and I start putting them back together inside of myself to, because I, I had that personal desire to know what's going to happen after I die. I let that be my personal responsibility, not anybody else's. So I needed to make sense of this ancient knowledge. Now, I'm not no fool. I'm not going to think that somebody hasn't figured this out before, that somebody didn't come in just like me and say, hey, how can I, how can I figure out the truth? So that's, what I that's how I would kind of... <laughs> calibrate my compass like somebody you know somebody has to know somebody knew about this what is this and like I said before it's right here <laughs> it's so close that you can't even see it the truth to the matter of things and it's a school for sure your body is for sure a temple or a learning center because man from all of this from why you have five here and five here and what that really means and why you have phi, P-H-I here, and what that really means. What all of this is really meaning. So that's, that's the tuition, and, that, and, and to develop the intuition, and this is the school here. The temple is here. So if I'm out there, and I'm, you know, I'm being what you can, what, what's called being misled, because there are things that can mislead you. That's all a part of the school. If there's nothing that can mislead you, then it's almost like in a school that's basing itself on contrast, there's no way for you to actually find your way. So if we just go and say everything is okay, everything is fine, I love everything, I'm unifying with everything, we need to really know what are the contexts, what is the context of what we're saying because what that's turning into is it's turning into, let's say I have this kindergarten, these kindergartners here, this clear clearly abusive threat is coming and then i'm saying in my in my mind which is beyond which is overriding my intuition just love everybody don't get into any conflicts let this person in and let him be with the children because i'm hypnotized <laughs> and i've lost my way and I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore because I've been led out on a mission away from my soul. Because anybody who would do something like that, they would be like, you got to put yourself in the mind of like 800, 900 years ago. That's like great, 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 and that's exactly why grandma's house generally, when that was all being operated, if everything was tore up and everything was messed up, you could always still go to grandma's house because her stuff was still stable. So that still applies today. Our great, 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 great grandmothers, ancient mothers, their house is in order. <laughs> it still stands to this day. And so anytime you want to come into the temple of yourself, and start really knowing and learning something, you only need to sit in that space inside of yourself. The last thing I'm going to do is start looking at all these shadows on the wall and try, and try to make something of what I'm seeing, or even better, trying to make a truth out of a lie. Some people have taken these characters that we're dealing with today. Let's, let's say, for instance, uh, the, the Trumps, okay? And... And watching these people so long are starting to believe that these people are somehow standing in the truth and somehow here to help. And you're, you're watching that too much. You're getting hypnotized by the same thing that we warned about with that thing. This, this is WWE. This has no intentions to actually bring you into the truth. Wrestling is fake. <laughs> That's really what you're seeing on this, in this politics. This stuff is fake. But if you start watching it like a little kid, still believing in Santa Claus, 
and you think that that's real and you start telling everybody else that that's real, you now see what the purpose of all that is. These people spent so much time studying the minds and studying predominantly the minds not to help everyone. They studied the knowledge about the mind to control everybody. That's MK Ultra to control everybody. It's like an egomaniac kind of thing where you just decide in desperation that the entire thing must be in your command in order for what? For you to live in a 72, max 72 year frequency band, totally wasting your life? Because you wouldn't learn, you can't learn really much about yourself when you're trying to control all these external things. You got to get this in control and then you'll see how that reflects out into everything around you. And then when something comes into your space, it's because it's supposed to be there because you're supposed to be looking at it because there's a lesson to learn. And that's how even when you start moving up into these higher regions where you need to be cautious where you go and what you affiliate with, that's how you even get a sign sometimes that, hey, you need to get in there and really, really set that order straight about your affiliation. So since I have to do it, I can imagine that that's probably coming to the community in some way, shape or form where we need to really be on point with what we're saying we represent especially or who we're with, especially since in all these channels and all this watching going on and people got other people's data and information and he's affiliated with that. Like I went into my Facebook groups and I didn't know that people could add you to Facebook groups, right? So personally, I use Facebook just for the activity feed. So when I tap into groups, I'm seeing that I'm a member of 300 groups and I'm like, okay, I'm not a member of any, any real groups. And I started looking in these groups. And man, I'm telling you, if somebody had just decided to do screen captures and say, Seven's in this group, he's in this group, he's, he's in this group, people would think I'm a crawliest, uh, a, a, a alien worshiper, and all sorts of stuff, just based on the affiliation of the groups that I have been added to. And on top of that, I don't know if, you know, they say in one of these groups, there's a sleeper cell or some stuff goes crazy. And they say, everybody in that group, we need to now be on, on them and watching them and all this. That's what affiliation is. OK, so if you don't really represent that, why are you in that space? And that's what I realize in this conscious community. What they're doing is, is they're casting this huge blanket or envelope and basically saying everybody in there. Is all all together. First of all, we're all together anyway. So get that out of the way. What is tribe? Tribe is when we have an instant, we have an institution, we have something that a constitution, if you may, or us being together. And in that that constituent, we are agreeing on this frequency spectrum of where we want to go because we want to make progress. So that way, if someone's teaching math, it's not because they think they know math. <laughs> It's because they know. And we have set up a sanctum to where when you when you say in your life, I'm ready to learn math or am I at? We do you the favor that all family members to do for each other and make sure that we put someone in front of you that knows my at. So this way it decreases the amount of time and perils that you can experience on the journey, because that's what your parents are trying to do. With our kids, we try to reduce as much of the perils and the problems that we went through in their lives. And if we raise them properly, they actually get that awareness. That's why I'm here in front of you right now. My mother did the best that she could with what she had and what she was presented with in life and all of the things against her to raise me in a way that was similar to the what the principles and the core ideals that her mother and father gave to her. So when you cut that off, which would be simple as like also saying that, hey, anybody can come up here and teach anybody, anybody go, whoever, who wants to teach math today? Well, I don't even know a math, but I'm going to give it a shot. This is what the conscious community is now consisting of. And so that's why my title today is Dear Conscious Community. <laughs> like I'm at this stage right now where my ancestors are telling me, check your affiliations. I live in the jungle, as I mentioned, so I don't have I'm not walking all over Facebook and 
all this stuff all day. We're building things and they're working. We're bringing in lines of resources and st stability. Because that's where, it's, you know, you, this is a luxury to be learning about conscious knowledge and all this kind of stuff. There are folks that can't eat right now. So they're not even they're not in the mindset right now to be trying to figure out where consciousness is and what all there is is about. There's also, like I said, children, inner city youth that they're bombed out. And we are intelligent enough to develop the faculties and we should be doing that because, you know, if you let somebody else do it and they're just doing it for a monetary gain only or for, you know, just to, to enter into another niche or target market or whatever, that is still never going to get the attention that it needs. We as what you would say is, is, is conscious, if you may, woke, whatever they're calling it, beings need to be the ones creating the future of the, the, the things that everyone is going to be using or we don't see no change. So that's why they got everybody talking and just talking and talking and talking and not building anything and tearing down the ones that do try to build something because they know as long as there's nothing built, we can let them talk, give them a platform to talk, give them YouTube. As long as they spend five or six, seven hours a day talking, this is time wasted and they can never build. As long as they don't have a, a constituency, as long as they are not really organized, as long as anything goes, as long as they can say what they want to say and it's all a part of the same thing, namaste, there will never be the great levels of growth of the institutions of consciousness and, and vast awareness. And because that's what low vibratory frequency is the antithesis of. See, it's not, let's say, a personal beef, even though some people are taking, some beings are taking it personal. It's just about that when, when there's a, a, it's a, a, the forward movement and the, the retrograde. When there's a yin, there's a yang. Every desire that you have, there's an anti, there's an anti thought, a shadow that wants to just even nullify it, meaning making it not happen at all or even pull it back into the other direction, giving the, the, giving the opportunity for it never to occur, okay? So this is, this is again why we're in a boat, if you may, and why we have to constantly work on the rigging and we have to know where is the current moving and we have to do our nautical checks because we can't just float off <laughs> into, into the, the vast ocean and expect to really be navigators if we don't know what kind of waters we're actually in. And so September 1st, full moon, these waters are saying, hey, get out of the whole guilt trip because they're guilt tripping you now and you're not even saying anything about the atrocities that are taking place. There's lots of them happening and I'm just saying like it, look at this, so, at this stage, we have still 35 to 40 percent of the community watching the sky for grays. Still in this super external idea that there are just these other beings that are supposed to come here and to save us. Some people talk about these other dimensions in these other realms and, and don't realize that everything that exists in those spaces are also here, even if. You have to dig into the ground and find its beetle. <laughs> it's that beetle. So on the other dimension, it may be that. But over here, it's the beetle. But it still is here, too. So there is no other space. Everything is all here because that's a replica of everything being also all here. So there's a redundancy. There's an actual blueprint system that does unfold through this space. And... That's the system that I'm working with because that's the system my ancestors were working with. And when stuff doesn't adhere to that, it clearly shows why it doesn't adhere because it just breaks all the rest of the principles. And see, that's, that's why it, it's what's called the cable. Some call it the cobble, which means it's basically an unbreakable circle, an oath, as in the O in oath, a truth or foundation that could be that you could stand on that nothing could shake. And so that way you wouldn't be worried about whatever's going on in the stars today. Watching the stars is literally like watching TV. 
oh, this time on the full moon, you're going to probably be in argument with your lover, and then this is going to happen with your job, and you're gonna, but you're going to see success in the next cycle. This sounds like a novella, a soap opera. So even watching the stars, it's like, oh, my goodness, here comes Pollock's. Oh, my goodness, Mercury's going retrograde. Oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, the sun. Oh, well, shoot, it's heating up. Ah! <laughs> nah, Doc. See, if you have ever been into the highest states of your conscious, which I'm, you're, I'm not in the highest stage of my consciousness right now. I will go there and, uh, you know, and, mm, and see it all and then still have to come and ground right back into the space. The most important part is can you ground back into the space? If you could, you could take off in the rocket ship Kundalini, but can you land? Were your roots, is your launch pad and your landing strip strong enough to hold when you need to come back down and actually be with, you know, what's in that space and what's on that level? So, I'm going to look over here because I did have a few things that I wanted to say. Actually, I believe that I've actually said everything. So, what I'm going to do if you have a question, all you have to do is type question before your question and put it in the chat box. And I'm looking at a system that it looks like only Facebook is running. So if YouTube is um, over there, then maybe you would need to contact me through Facebook. Let me see what this says. I think it's going to tell me what I'm broadcasting to. Oh, it says that it is broadcasting to understanding. Let me check this out really briefly. Hold on, Tribe. I'm a, I see this over here, and it's not broadcasting. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, YouTube is, it didn't catch the stream. So if you're on Facebook, which is where uh, this is going through right now, and you do have a question about anything that was presented, it's been 10 years. A lot has come out. A lot has actually went in. And what I'm doing now is, is that I realized that there was a need for, for that universal blueprint. But I also realized that even to start testing that kind of thing out and to start to even start you know, dealing with it, this was not even something that you wanted to do, let's say, with everybody, because what if you were wrong? What if you made a mistake? Then everybody would be subjected to that. So we started ambassador training because it was a space that we all came together and we agreed that we were just gonna do our best. And we went through this process, we discovered eneology, and now the, the, latest, the latest and the greatest with us has been now the complete coding system to the language, which we've walked through the first nine letters to truly give the definition of what they are. And in that, we learned so much. We learned that not only from a level of deity and what deity truly is, but also symbolism, what symbolism is really about, and the ancient story, which you would call even hidden secrets of Kabbalah, all of that, the Phoenician language, Hebrew, and even uh, uh, Kemetan or uh, hier hieroglyphs, and also the hieratic and demotic script, we're all saying and telling the same thing, which was a story that was encoded within the stars. And, you know, why it would be lovely to try to get on to one conversation and, and explain all of that, it wasn't a one conversation thing. So that's what we put together as karma codes inside of ambassador training. Also, I'll tell everybody this because some may see, okay, well, ambassador training is $79. Uh, you know, I can't get in there. This is what happens in life. If you want something and you feel something is 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 for you you need to figure out how to attract that anyway you can't just just like your parents will show you you're just being given every single thing and you don't know how to 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 work for it yourself so that way there's a proper energetic exchange there's massive jewels that i've delivered and continue to deliver but what ambassador training is really about and stands for is also a being beginning to learn how to empower themselves and actually become sovereign and we give you all the tools to do that. So I heard there was some com complaint about even our websites and even the, the financial technologies. But hey, 
I don't know any space that you can go into where they even give you a direct real way, not to play game, but a real way to just offset all of the costs, even your supplements. I set it up where people can basically buy all their supplements from the traction going on in the cryptocurrency market and how it still rises and falls every single day and money is in there. You put the little money in there, it makes money. You take it back out in cryptocurrency and all, and we accept cryptocurrency on the site. That means that really, if a person is still saying, I'm not being given an opportunity, I'm not, this is a filter for beings that not, are not really interested anyway in actually really pushing themselves into the highest level of their, of their own awareness. It's a filter. It's not a wall. <laughs> it's something that says, hey, you're going to have to take some time and sit down and learn something or learn how to learn something. Cryptocurrency is a steep learning curve. It just trains the mind to, if you can't figure something out, it doesn't mean that you can't figure it out. It just means that you're not trying hard enough and you're not utilizing your resources. And also, the real, real knowledge tells you also from, the, from a lot of these guys that were teaching a long time ago, they'll tell you, hey, never do anything that you're not really good at. Just go and find somebody else and let them teach you. And so when you're, when you're in that, I'm ready to, to excel, I understand the order and I understand and respect my elders, it's easy to find folks that'll help you. It's only when you come in acting like you think you know everything and you're the savior of everybody that that's going to come across to the beings that are really doing that and don't have to say that. You see what I mean? So, yeah, man, you know, it's all it's it's all of this. And it's this beautiful connection that we have with each other. And this also means as what came up yesterday was how some people think unconditional love is just to let you do and say and be whatever you want to be. <laughs> That's the new concept. That's the hey, let's not give any kind of order or chastisement or discipline to the children and they'll be great. No, they won't. They'll tear up everything. They'll have no respect. So it's like you got to be br you got to bring that balance in and you got to learn how like to, to bring that order in, you know, if you ever expect to really build something. So it being here for 10 years and watching us all and putting my heart into this and my best it's the least that I can do is not only to say this stuff, but to actually build what it takes to one day see it. And even this vision that I'm seeing now, like even with the conscious community, as I said, there's a lot that needs to be cleaned up now. <laughs> Some people thought they were doing that in politics with the, what they call it, drain the swamp. The conscious community needs to be drained of the swamp needs to be drained. Like we still have so many teachers again that have no clue of what they're talking about, but they have hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands of followers. Then we have these elders over here that know this, have been living this their whole life. They stay in indigenous lands and territories right now, still deeply connected to mother and willing to even jump on Zoom with you and explain to you the connection and they're getting no airplay, no time, no attention. So I decided also that, you know how in Secret Energy where we have our directories, I'm going to be enlisting the assistance of the community to create a directory of beings that are following the blueprint, even if they're brand new. In fact, Secret Energy has always been the place where those that are not getting spin and don't have millions of views and all that kind of stuff can come and say what they need to say. Ambassador training is even a place where, where those who have techniques already, they come in front of tribe and start working with those techniques. So you start understanding what it's even like to be talking in front of people. There's a whole learning curve there. And so let me get to these questions because I see there's a few questions here. So someone says, question, how do we bring what is inside outside in balance in a world that has no place for a melanated being. Okay, now this is an extremely stacked statement because who told you there's no place for a melanated being and why are you listening? Okay, 
That is it right there. That's the answer to your question. When you accept that kind of thing, it, it equals what the first part of your question is, like, how do I bring this balance? You can't with actually thinking of it like that. The power of melanin is it super cools. It's a super, con it's a super uh, what do they call that? A, semi a semiconductor, and it can super cool. That's why they coat the tip of space shuttles with it, because when you're entering into the atmosphere, the point or the tip of the shuttle is moving so fast that it is building up friction and heat. And the melanin is on the tip of it to super cool it because that's what melanin also does. It allows us to take the sun and actually translate it and cool it into something that is useful for us at this stage that we're on. So if you think of, if you're standing right in the face of the sun, <laughs> There is rays and gamma rays and all types of frequencies that are even poisonous, if you may, to where, we're, we're, where we would be at as physical beings. So the melanin takes all those substances and turns it and transfers it, super cools it into other frequencies in order to make it useful for something. So how could that have no place? <laughs> all right. So that's my answer to that question. Fix that in your consciousness. And you'll start seeing how the balance comes from the outside to the inside because meaning when you're internally balanced and you conceive something, it comes into the world balance. So it can't be, you know, it can't be uh, interfered with. There's a lot of talk about these oscillations right now and these extreme oscillations. There's a pole in the center. You're seeing this two strand DNA, right? They got you seeing that but you can't see the Sushumna, which is the pole in the center. And we've talked about this diagram of life. So if you want to explain the extremes, yeah, you can learn something in the yin and yang. But in the center, that pipeline, that straight beam, that all-knowing, I don't need to be questing, basically. That is the, that's what you're working to tap into. You're working to draw closer to the center. So this next question is, if I don't activate Kundalini in 2020, is it a big problem or can I do it this and without can I do it in this life without a hurry? The word hurry and Kundalini don't even go in the same sentence together. See, what happened was, is this is why any master can see when a being is not a master. Because truly the only le high levels of mastery is Tantra and Kundalini. And if you can't plug into the great mother, then you can't unlock Kundalini for any prolonged periods. You may be able to take some substances and blast up there really briefly. But if anything, you'll snatch out your tether. This is what they were taught. This is what they talked to all again. These right was it, uh, left brain thinkers that wanted to come into the great sanctum through only learning and like this, this, this knowledge in all these books. And they were telling them, listen, if you don't got any roots, this was what Carl Jung told them. What we found out is when we get these super intelligent people, which they had reached this height of what you would say is intelligence. That was the birth of intelligency. And when they reached that height, what was being noticed is a lot of them were going crazy. They seemed to unlock the code and figure out the riddle, but. They were just getting untethered and going into megalomaniac from depression to suicide to all this stuff was happening. And so they bought in these these deep. When, and this is a succession of this, even Jung had only been reading about this because the alchemists encountered this problem and they solved the problem. They showed that basically what the hermetics, what the hermetists were doing, because the alchemist is the first one. Hermetics came later. The hermetics tried to do it through just this knowledge about the metals and all this kind of stuff that they were examining from Earth. And the alchemists were trying to tell them, listen, if you don't tap back into my app or matter and ground yourself, when, what's going to happen is you're going to activate it, the Therian, and you're just going to be untethered and it's going to take you. Because it's going to be like you're going to go into a state and you're never going to be able to come out. The reality here is, is that we have to understand how to take to, to take um, not to, to be able to take. Um, maybe the, the word is not take to be able to accept. There it is to be able to accept what 
our great, great ancestors, which are, you know, almost unfathomable at this stage, what our great ancestors are, are, are giving us in their projections and, and visions, but not let it override who we truly are, which you would say is the ego. You have to have your ego really small, but, but there and hard and able to maintain its roots while still getting the full blast of the ancestral energy revealing to you all there is. And then you need to be able to come back out of that and actually be able to ground that literally and actually make an application with it to be able to do something with it, to bring it to life in our world. And so, again, what was noticed is when people were trying to think their way into the holiest of holies, they just went crazy because they didn't have a root. What would happen was would be they would start opening up their subconscious mind and it would be just closet after closet after closet of terror. Terror is things you don't understand, things you can't define, because how the mind works is when you're even looking around you, the mind feels comfortable because it recognizes everything that's around you. So it's able to adjust into a frequency. If you were looking around you and you recognize nothing, this is like somebody opening the trunk of the reality and all of a sudden you see the whole thing and you see that it's not even where you are and you can't where you thought you were and you can't recognize anything. Not only you don't see chairs, you don't see couches, you don't see clouds, you don't see stars, you don't see anything that you actually recognize. So what this throws the body into is basically extreme terror. So masters know how to deal with that. They go through a process of allowing them, they're, they're allowing their consciousness to not always try to define everything in order for it to feel comfortable. Because we found out that if you try to define everything, you create a cage. You, it's what definition is. Definition is a cage. Even when we use words like trust, unity, these things are bigger than words based on the definitions that we've given them. But we try to confine them within our definitions. And that's the limitation to the language. So continuing with this, my answer to your question is, so with Kundalini, what happened was is that the Catholics and the Jesuits and, and these groups needed to get rid of the forbidden fruit. Everybody was aware of the power of Kundalini and Tantra. Now, when I say everybody, anyone that was looking for that level of, of, of advancement. However, it was also very clear that it was very dangerous because even in Tantra alone, it gives you the power of magnetism, which pulls things to you. And when those things are being pulled to you, it's kind of like even like a moth going to the light. It just feels this energy that it wants to be around. And that's what's drawing it to that being. But it, they don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen to them if they unite with that being. And so there have been men and women alike, and there are still men and women alike, cults and covens uh, that are still functioning, that there are leaders in there that have unlocked certain parts of this kind of tantric power. This is what Eliester Crowley even did when it went inverted. And people get sucked into that, not really knowing what they're, it's almost like you come into, you, it's like what you see with magicians hypnotizing people with spells. They don't even know why they're being drawn into it. And then all of a sudden, of course, the abuse starts. Then you start noticing others are there being abused, too. But somehow you're still not able to get out of it. And it's because the master has somehow been utilizing this Kundalini force, tantric force, to create fields. These fields are huge. Like a field could cover in a, one person's field can cover the entire country. That's how big the field can get when you learn how to grow the field. However, again, you can imagine, you know, you got, as I talked about, the five levels of compartmentalization and what I call the evil avatars, the, the schizoids, the masochistics, uh, the anal, the oral, and the psychopathic, right? And which are the shadows of our great traits. And that if you gave those beings, which that's what the inverted pentagram is, if you gave those five beings that act out in those characters inverted kundalini power, which they, some of them have now, you get untold atrocities. That's why it was suppressed. So kundalini, again, is not something that you want to hurry up and rush in doing. 
Kundalini is not technically described properly in the community as something that you just sit there by yourself and you try to rise only through breasts. You're getting a part of it. But actually, what it's really about is understanding the as above, so below, which is the female and the male and how they connect. How if I if I touch a woman's hands like this, my opposite and her her positive and her negative are opposite to my positive and negative, which makes us jump off. Basically, it makes us actually connect. And then there's more to it. How to clean out her channel. See, let's talk about this very briefly. And this is, again, let us understand the work that's actually ahead of us and why we want to continuously do the best to support our teachers that are still aware of this level of knowledge. Now, what's happened to even the woman or the womb is that the female is an extension of the great mother. And the great mother is bringing all of these beings into life right now. But she's always going through issues and problems, fights, quarrels, bombs, death. It's happening right now. So as a mother, her womb needs to be cleared, okay? Because that's how, she, that's how her energy and her manifestations work. So what Tantra is, is Tantra shows how what could be possibly the sun clears the earth's kundalini, okay? By, sh in the, in sh by showing that the man can actually do this to the woman, and what happens is for a man that understands Tantra and he doesn't even have to touch the woman, by the way, he just works with her field. And in this process, you'll start seeing her go through what is a very strong orgasm. And then at a certain point, she will peak in her orgasm and then it will flip from all of this enormous pleasure into all of this hurt and pain. So you'll watch her go from this arou ultimately aroused state to now start crying and sobbing and all of this. And of course, for anyone who's not a master playing around with Kundalini, you start seeing this happen and you disconnect for a moment, which could be detrimental to her because what she's going through is she's going through the cleansing process. And then in the cleansing process, since Everything is the memories or the information. She's going through these memories and information of her pain. And what happens is that is corrected and restored. All of that is then basically replaced with the feeling of comfort. The feeling of stability. And then when she gets through all of that, her womb is clean. Her womb is clear. And when her womb is clear, her projections are like 10x, 20x, 50x. And this is what they know, again, in these occult societies that are still functioning. That's why there's so much desolation on the sacred feminine. And another thing, when everybody may think or some may think that this is predominantly pr propagated by the masculine energy, you're incorrect. On the physical plane, males don't actually have the type of power that it takes to completely dominate and control the realm because what the realm is water it's 70 percent water so that's the percentile so the being that is mostly water is going to rule so that unlocks as I, again i we we talked about in gh uh not gh Rees, but um glenn keely went to his death trying to explain to people about the moho man dan covens and priestess priestess crafts that were still out in 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 the black forest etc where basically you had women that were attacking other women's wombs you had a part of that spectrum of the pleiades you had certain women that had aligned themselves with the death and the, the abortions and the and the destruction of other women's children and, it, their, and it's only their power that is strong enough to hold so much of the, of the realm under sway of continuously perpetuating the atrocities going on right now against women. And just like in a lion faction, which is the model, again, of the cat of what's happening in this, in this sphinx and this, this chimera that, that most of us are built with, in that sanctum, the male is not the one out hunting. The male is not the one. The male is back there taking care of the kids. The most dangerous predator, if you may, was the female lion. 
So again, that's why those are our protectors, but our protectors can also be our destroyers. That's the yin and that's the yang. Where, where do we want to be? In the balance. In the balance, away from the extremes, like processing the energy, digesting the energy, rooting, the in, rooting ourselves in it, and then going forth from there. You know, if you get to something and it is just starting to make you fly off and you can't make any sense of it, you need to take one moment, step back, ground, because this is not Voltron and Transformers and My Little Pony and all of the rest of these programs that have been running to make you think that it's just all a game. If it's a game, it's a high stakes game. And what you can lose is your life. So if you invested already 25, 30 years, 15 years, 60 years into this venture, <laughs> you need to basically make sure that something comes from this. I don't need to be a venture capitalist to know that. I need to make sure that something comes from my venture here on this planet and all of what I'm investing in here with my time and my energy. And you only can seat yourself into that when you know where you come from. That's why sometimes, man, you just had to sit back and say, man, look at your ancestors. Go inside, see your DNA. Look where you come from. I don't have to accept anything that's not in alignment with the higher truth. And the higher truth is you can sit, you can sit someone balanced in front of it and they'll tell you every time what is what. So let's keep going here. There's a couple questions. It's good that we get a chance to get some of these questions out today. So this next question is, okay, I thought I had this thing to where it wasn't moving. Give me one second. Okay, so someone is asking, and let me just pull this down a little bit so I can see more of this. And then let me see if also if I can mark. Okay, so I'm just going to start from here because maybe these questions came earlier and I didn't get a chance to get to them. But this question was, how do I prepare to have a child and to be birthed in this world? And, you know, this it really entails the cleansing process, um, if you wish. Uh, it really uh, requires you to understand what comes with children, which, man, I could definitely say the, the earth school from this curriculum level with the egg and home, home uh, ec home economics and all that does not teach really what children are about. And so if you don't have a child yet, there's so much to that. You know, I couldn't even just answer that question because that's really the highest thing that we're ever supposed to do. <laughs> like if you think about it, like bringing in a replica of yourself into this world with its own uniqueness is like, you know, that's why we're, we're having such a situation right now because we have so many children, so many beautiful gems that have not been shaped, molded, and fashioned properly. And it's, it's blowing back in our face. So it's really about getting yourself to a point where you're fully comfortable with the being that is now in front of you and you feel balanced. Then you know you're going to have a child that is balanced. So that's the answer to that question. The next question here from Mike is, is it okay if I recite the code of the matrix on, YouTube, on, the YouTube, on my YouTube channel? Absolutely. Do what you do. Like the knowledge is just that is for everybody to turn into their own level of wisdom. You know, as long as it's not taken out of the context of what it originally is, is, is designed for, which is just to bring us into truth. And then also the cult of the matrix is 10 years old. Of course, there were things that I thought were really one way and were really another, but the code there still stands about how to look into language in order to actually get the, the truth, the depth of, what it is really that you're searching for. Um, so another um, question here is, again, if you have a question, you need to put question in front of it and that's how I'll address it. Um, okay, so uh, someone says, how am I supposed to handle going through constant intense Kundalini activations where I feel a tight electric current moving upward 
How do I ensure this is a safe ascension process for me? Again, dealing with this energy, and, and this is why, like, that's like the last class. Like, that's even why there is such a, again, um, a certain knowledge that has to come around this energy because this, this energy is also, it's very sexual in, in many ways. So as a man and as a woman, we are expressions in the physical plane of two opposite poles, okay? And so when the man and the woman come together, then they are basically in the state of the androgen if they're both activated. So if the man and the woman come together and they're both activated, they activate androgen. Now, some may say, well, what if I don't have a man? What if I don't have a woman, okay? What it talks about is, is that you can bring yourself to a process of priming kundalini. This means that maybe these breathing exercises and things that you're doing with yourself, the meditations and the mantras and all that kind of stuff, it will prime you for the process. And then when it's finally time and Kundalini is ready to now make its full circuit, the master will literally appear. Because this, this is not, the physical realm is, is, is one of the last things to appear. There's already other levels where everything is more concentrated. So it can see you, and that's why you should trust the process and know, hey, if I'm not getting that, once you understand the principles and how it works, if I'm not getting that or I'm experiencing something that I need to keep going, I need to keep working through, then I need to do that. And then when that's done, it will ding, done. Now here comes the next level of the initiation. So if you're feeling like, you know, this, like you said, tight electric current moving upwards, how do I ensure this is a safe process for me? Trusting yourself and but use your craft, meaning no, am I grounded? Do I feel grounded? Like, am I confused? Am I angry? Am I fighting with people? Am I scared? Because Kundalini is an intensifier of these forces. That's why I said when you get into the orgasm, once it intensifies, it flips fields. And then everything that you need, you having all that joy, now you need to actually go through some pain in order to balance out all this joy that you just had because both of these are going to bring some level of growth. Lots of joy brings a level of growth. Lots of pain also brings a level of growth, and thus it's balanced. So, And then also, once you start removing yourself from that pain, joy, pain, joy, pain, joy, which is like really going into the center, you now get into like what is contentment. It's not then that you're trying to actually do something. You are it. You're sitting in the center of yourself at that stage. So going on here. Someone's asking, is it possible, actually, uh, this is Sister Poon asked, is it possible to get connected and stay connected to the higher source and remain in that state, or is that too much? <clears throat> Again, like I said in the beginning of this conversation, we're always connected. This idea that we can even disconnect is hilarious. It's like just as funny as death when you realize how these two go together, disconnection and death, uh, you know, trying to cut an umbilical cord and separate all those kind of concepts in the illusion. What it really is about is, is that you can go into higher degrees, if you may. You can get more amplitude, if you may. You can connect or expand more into other energetic centers, if you may. And in that process, you start learning how to balance out the forces and how to hold that. It's like if you have a, a lot of children, you learn how to end up dealing with all those children and how to manage your household but you don't have generally all the children at once. You actually, there's one, there's two, there's three. So getting used to this process of actually gradually increasing one's awareness, not in some desperation that, oh, I got to have this done by right now, which is definitely going to cause some blunders because that's not even how it moves. That's not even how it, how it feels. Like it comes with Again, the compassion of letting you know you're right on time. Just stay on, stay on this, but you're right on time. Don't be listening to other people's timelines. Like I said, they were talking about 2012. There was another auspicious June, the what is that, June 26 or whatever, the first day of 26,000 years, blah, 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 already ticked by. And we, we're still here. So it's really about in this moment, how much am I really getting out of this moment? And that's another thing. 
all of this stuff with this consciousness and this Kundalini and all this stuff, this stuff can be all cons all consuming too. Some people say, well, that's all there really is. Man, there's life. There's experience. There's growth. There's application. There's action. There's bonding. There's connecting. There's building. You know what I mean? There's things also going on outside of the construct also of just learning about Kundalini all day and spiritual stuff. Because a lot of times why we're in these books and we're, you know, watching these 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 uh, teachings, our children are over there like. I need what you have already. <laughs> you don't need to go and learn any more or do any more. Just give us what you have and you will find that bring a certain kind of peace and excuse me, wholeness and contentment to you that you've been searching for. And again, I always have to clarify the difference between peace and wholeness is a big difference. Like a piece of something is not the whole thing. So we can't imagine that somehow we would get somewhere only dealing with just pieces. But at the end of the day, I also see how see now why you can't just mix everything together and expect that it's all going to just harmonize. There is an order and there are certain filters to allow certain things in when it's time and when they learn the space that they're actually in. And so what happened to me was, is I just feel like that with the conscious community, a lot of times since there's a lot of uh, young people that really respect what's going on and what I'm saying, I feel a responsibility for them. And when someone comes along and says something and it throws them into disarray or it hurts them and, and I keep hearing about it and they tell me about it, I feel like I have to do something. And man, it's, it's a wild position to be in because I'm also a person that is like, look, man, that's, that's the big thing is still needing us there. Why come into something so rudimentary? And it's because we can never grow out of, you know, our, our existence. We can never say, oh, I'm not supposed to be here or, or, or with these people or doing this. We can't say that. We always have to be willing to come back into the space. Like, I've been doing this for 10 years. I can just coast it out. I could say the same thing over and over and over again and, and, and get pays, payment on that. I could keep launching more and more universities and more and more. And it has to really have a purpose and a reason that, that serves the divine whole for me to really get engaged and for me to feel like that I could spend my time and my energy on doing that. And that's why I come in here and I bring it all to you. Like, I don't just bring a fraction or what I'm guessing about. I spend a lot of time and energy connecting in with the truth and to try to condense that into English and to really bring that in a way that's not going to harm you also. Because if I'm talking to you in a way and, I'm, and it belittles you, if I'm putting you into some kind of stress and anxiety and making you feel like the world is over and that you're worthless. If I'm doing that, I'm not supposed to be in this space. You see what I mean? Like that, that's what this is really about is we need to start being able to tell, tell our teachers and tell those that are around us, look, the energy that you've given off and how this really, this energy is really coming out is like this. And we need to also be okay with accepting what they say if we're looking to continuously hone in what our, what our message is about and we have great intentions anyway for each other, that's why I'm here listening right now. And I've always had it. People know you can reach me. I'm on support. So if you have like, oh, seven, I don't know why you said this or why this is like this. I'm going to show you why it's like that, because I didn't just make it up. I'm going to actually had bring brought that from the blueprint. So this next question is. Someone says that they purchased the golden intonation on secret energy and if they want permission to use it in their YouTube space. And what I also what I say about that is that the creators, uh, which were some very, very unique uh, frequency engineers that put that together, that they asked me to respect their license. So in that way, their license doesn't allow everyone to just use this, you know, on their videos, their channels and their stuff. What it says is that you can use these frequencies for your meditations and for what it is that you want to work for in your life uh, to, to raise your frequencies. 
Uh, so it's like that same thing with uh, when you're dealing with someone's intellectual property that they want that intellectual property to be respected. So I respect that. Um, so this next question here is, with the awareness of the inner world being able to shift the external reality, what is one of the more efficient mindsets to hold during this period? Many are living in a seemingly multiple parallel worlds right now and their minds creating perceptions of distortions. Uh, I agree. And that's just all a part of the process, though. Like, that's just, you know, as long as, again, we have these pillars that are going to be able to nudge us back towards truth when we go out in the extreme, we'll be all right. But if we're not going to listen, then we're going to have to reap the full brunt of the load. So, again, this is not so much as uh, just an efficient mindset. It's really about an, an efficient environment. And that's why we have tribe, because we always stay in tune and synchronize with each other. And we find that with that, it doesn't just come up for one of us. If something is happening, we find that it's others are experiencing that same thing. Uh, inside of the tribe and some are way more efficient at dealing with that because they may have encountered that before and that's what the benefit is of having a full spectrum also i will say that uh in one week i think it's about one more week we're going to be opening up uh the specialist training and as everybody knows specialist training is free and there is knowledge there the courses have been reorganized uh there's mental spiritual and financial and physical areas and what we're also going to do is we're going to start a group because we also have the secret energy, energy group, but we're going to start a group around specialist training. Specialist training is geared to not only assist you in learning about yourself and assisting yourself financially, but it's also geared towards interacting with others about that. And so that's something that's coming in a week and a half. We're waiting on a final design with secret energy. We decided to change uh, the design one more time to match what we see the social profile is going to. Um, also, as I said before, what we're predominantly really focusing on now as we go into this next session is getting our tribe equipped to come out with their not just message, but many have techniques. The mouth is only one, you know, it's, it's one thing. You know, some play music. You know, some know how to work with the dream space. And so we've been building on a consistent basis to get to a level where we can now start bringing forth these amazing talents. And instead of that same lineup all the time, and that's why I'm going to change up the, the directory here the moment I'm, I'm going to get to this and get some help in doing it. But instead of that same lineup of the same people that you always see, David Icke and the rest of that whole lineup, it's like, man. This is what it this is what we got from it. Like, I, I, so somebody's got to take it from here. Let's go and find that somebody <laughs> and let's give them a space. And so if you know them and you know that they're on the level and not coming to try to bring in some alien or some weird concept that nobody's heard of. And, you know, all of that, just bring in the masters. And because the masters are that's what they're designed for. They're here to teach. And they just been like, OK, I'm I'm trusting <laughs> masters. Just trust. Like I've trusted the process whenever I'm going to be called forth to do what I do. That's when I'm going to be called forth. Other than that, I'm just going to spend time and honing in my technique. That's what masters do. Right. So now we want to give these masters a space to come forward and a platform and the proper technologies to bring what it is they need to bring, especially in this final quarter, this three months. And I call it the final quarter because I do feel like. The decisions that we're making right now and the energy that that we're harmonizing into right now is really going to be what we inherit here. But see, I don't think that that's just happening now. <laughs> I think it's always been that way. It's always been you reap what you sow. If you get into this and you really start working with this, it'll deliver some stuff to you now. You're not waiting on a specific date. And that's why it's not it's not always that beneficial to set these we need to unlock kundalini as the benchmark to whether or not you made it or not you see what i mean like just really think about it like the tree if you may has it unlocked kundalini you know what i mean is like, yes no it is it it, it 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 does what it does so as human beings we have a function that we do what we do 
regardless. Now, if we want to take it up a couple notches and, 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 you know, experience more of ourselves, we just should be grateful that we even have the opportunity to do that, that there is a next level, there is a Kundalini, but we shouldn't be looking at it like, if I don't get Kundalini, because that's that same, you need to be approved bag, <laughs> that you got to like, you got to have this, 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 and be approved in order to, to be okay with yourself. Now, if you go into the sanctum and you're going to teach children, yes, for sure, you're going to need to go through some approvals. <laughs> but for yourself and inside your own being, your own art, your own creation is always should be approved by you. Meaning what you're creating and who you are, you shouldn't feel like you're insecure with who you are because that's going to lead you into greater expressions of who you truly are. So these final questions are, Someone says, so the only way to be of service to others is, the, is by first being of services to oneself and sharing the process. That's not the only way, but I think it's the best way. Again, it's not the only way, but I, I think it's the best way for us to figure out balance ourselves before we try to bring others into balance. I don't even think it's possible to bring others into balance without one being in balance first and vibrating that energy. Uh, this next question is, I heard you say that the less melanin dominant beings, a.k.a. a European type, being from a lack of better term, are less grounded, but have a strong crown chakra, and that the more melanin dominant family has a stronger root. Do you have anything you can elaborate on that? Wholeness. Wholeness, Jeffrey. I'll elaborate, and this is something that is coming up, and it's our, actually, it's our next uh, course here in Ambassador Training coming this Friday, the compass part two is simply about how, well, not simply, I wish I could, wish it could be simple, but how the races of humanity are really the elements. You have water people, you have fire people, you have air people, if you may. And the temperaments of those elements reflect still to this very day within the nations of people that re represent those elements. So, I'm going to break down in that session, you know, just what fire is like when fire is useful, because let's say if our melanin, our melanin recessive, if you may, are fire beings. That's why even in their in their tales from the fire giants and blah, 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 and the volcanoes and all this kind of stuff. They're very fiery beings. And fire definitely has a use because of warmth. But fire can also be very clingy, just like when something catches fire. It can also destroy order. Things that are that are a complex order, like when your stuff catch on fire, that could be a pretty complex thing that just got all set on fire. Fire is clingy. Uh, also, the water beings, that's the Alkibulanians and, you know, dancing and moving and shaking and, you know, the spirituality and and these kind of things. And but also this other side of when the water gets stagnant, it becomes a swamp. And so this is the elements that you're looking at here and how they complement each other. And then how, also how they can nullify each other and how to keep those elements in balance because also most people are mixed. So they may have a predominant element, but then still have um, subsidiary elements, if you may, that are also acting in their lives. So um, OK, so this next question is I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Holness Barrett, and I'm not sure how to even operate here without entering into an energetic war of back and forth. Every time I step outside and begin to interface with the environment of the beings around me. Should I trek towards the equator? I will say for sure that, you know, the equator it seems to kind of be more balanced. I guess that's just a no no brainer anyway with the whole thing is like the closer you're on the line. However, sometimes the training is just more rigorous for the kind of beings that we are, meaning for you to go through the experience and for you to actually learn something from all of this based on your level of awareness. You could be an old soul. You may need to be in more extreme conditions or more extreme elements in order to ultimately gain a level up from this entire experience. So when you can walk outside then and you don't find yourself locked into that back and forth, 
then that could be the benchmarker or the compass for you to realize that you've actually now been able to achieve what you're set, you've set out to do here in this planet. So always make this serve you is what I'm saying. Always make these experiences and these, these, these lessons, these teachers, et cetera, make it serve you. Make it work for you. Don't get into it where you're like, I can't do this anymore because what happens is, is that once you make it serve you, you get a chance to see across the vista really fast and how it's really actually a benefit for you to actually be in a space at that particular point as a certain operative bringing across a certain type of energy and that you would be the only person that would be calibrated to be able to do something like that. This is what I have realized when I just asked a question to the higher self, all there is why I was even the, teaching this knowledge and why me instead of, and I would even think in my mind, maybe there were other people more qualified to actually do this. And what it explained to me is basically that you're there because of these experiences you've already been through. And the people that you're going to be talking to are people that need somebody that actually has gone through these experiences in order to actually be able to harmonize with where they're at. And so there it is. And so finding where the power is and what is being presented to us and overcoming the challenge. So the next question here is, and this is from our sister Catherine Holness. I'm going to be jumping on nine live soon. Looking forward to that. And so she's asking, what do you say to, what do you say to those neophytes who are still holding on to one particular deity or religion and construct? What I would say at this point is, is that even for myself personally, I have to really choose when I've covered something and then now it's like being more efficient. This is what the, uh, the main thing I say is efficiency. What happens is I will have to keep explaining certain things over and over and over and over and over again. Right. And I may find the energy to do that. But if for some reason I start feeling tired of doing that, but I still want that message to get across. I'll create something that becomes the workflow, if you may, or the automation for that same type of being, as we've talked about, you know, these five avatars, that same type of being or even the nine ideology paths to actually get it their way. So I'll see like, so let me, let me break that down just a little bit more. So let's say for instance, I keep coming across these number twos. There's something about in my vibration, I keep coming across these number twos and they keep getting their heart broke. And then every time I encounter one, it's always the same thing. They got the same subset. They're still, you know, they, they kind of have the same story. They got into it this for, for this reason, blah, blah, blah. So what I'll do maybe after the second or third time where I realize that this is no longer anomaly, this is a commonality, is I'll sit with myself and say, okay, how, what can we design since we're encountering the same problem? Now, remember, great businesses were formed like this. We're encountering the same problem. How can I actually bring a once and for all solution to this? So you'll spend time with that. And then you'll develop a format, a template, if you may. And then when someone comes across, and it's not, not even something robotic, it's just being more efficient. When something, someone comes across and that same thing is going on, it's like, here is, here is what I got for you. And then what you'll do is you'll start, because if you're, you're truly there to assist them, you don't want, this is not about ego and gratification. It's because you really want to help the person, even if they don't realize that. So then it's about how can I design something that makes them actually want to get through the process? Because as they say, the greatest teachers can do so without a person feel like, feeling like they're even being taught. So you develop this system and you make that, let's say, your pleasure, your goal. And then you tweak it a bit based on the reception of when you keep coming across those people until it's perfect or perfectly the way that you want it. And once it's that, I can tell you nine times out of ten that this will be an instant hit anyway. People will look for you. They'll come for you. They'll want it, and it will change their lives. And so it's that. It's really the efficiency. So if that's all I need to say about it. If you find yourself sometimes getting a little burnt out about that same rhetorical, develop something that actually, okay, we're going to take everybody through this process. And this really what ideology is. As we push this final profile change on the site, everyone, we have phase one and phase two of ideology ready to be deployed inside of the chat. And what this means is, this means that you'll be able to sign on a secret energy and it starts this ideology based on your information that you put inside the site, which is only calibrating your life path or, or your ideology number. 
And from there, you'll go through the process of us basically checking base with everything, like not skipping anything, not skipping fluoride, not assuming that you've already ascended to the top, but right from the base of it, but keeping it fun, your regimen, everything, your health, and then walking you all the way up through these phases just to make sure that when you're ready to come into phase three or you're ready to come into sovereignty mentorship, you're going to be starting on a common ground. So it makes it, it, it makes it so that, you know, there's a more of a harmony there. You understand what it is that you came in for and you already put in the work into yourself to actually achieve what it is that you're setting out to do. So it's not, hey, you sit down and watch me like I'm entertainment. It's you taking yourself through the process but me also not omitting even the stuff that I had to go through in the beginning, what I had to learn about my diet and even more benefit, though, because what I ultimately learned about my diet, what I ultimately learned about Kundalini and also what others ultimately learned about. You see what I mean? So this is how I feel that we can assist each other. And that's how we can keep growing with these innovations that are here and are scalable. And what I mean by that is that even when we had these projections initially, we wanted kind of like this world enlightenment thing to happen. And the world is full of 8 billion people. And if you imagine as an English speaker that somehow you would be able to speak a message that would get to the whole world, that's not even realistic. You would at least need to now consider something that can be translated into multiple languages. And then when you start even seeing that, even translating conversations into other languages, especially if it's on complex metaphysical natures in some languages, the translation does not come out properly. There's even certain words that there's no cognates of those same words in those languages. So that's why stuff has to come back down into text because then text is, is it makes you conform to a certain structure that allows it to be interpreted properly so others from other linguistic systems can actually understand it. So that's, that's the kind of thinking that has gone into these applications that we have brought forth. And just as with everything, this stuff doesn't pop up overnight. So it's been a few years of us developing this, and it's great to be finally at the point where it's coming into its completion. So this next question is, is um, what happens when being see you attempting to obtain and maintain balance and they choose to war with you and hold you down? What should I do? It's better to just understand what's actually going on. What's going on, as I mentioned before, is that there is a retrograde to everything that like your intentions, what you want to do, what you aspire to do. There's another force that is created right when you aspire to do that. That is like a shadow of that that literally is attempting to stop you from doing that. This is resistance, if you may. And that's why a lot of this is resistance training. So you end up learning how to deal with that other side of your consciousness, which is necessary. It's, it's, it's necessary as the fertilizer in the ground. But don't be surprised if you're dealing with some shit. <laughs> and what will happen is, is that you have to take it, learn how to take it through this cultivation process and take it through an alchemical process and distill it. The people who taught me the lessons in my life, even the people who may have chastised me or had to check me, I may have not liked it from the, at that moment, but as I grew, it helped me. It refined me. So this is that same thing. It's about. Well, again, since the question is what happens when being CU attempting to obtain and maintain balance and they choose a war with you, it's about realizing that this is the anti force and I need to learn how to harmonize that force. And there are several techniques not paying attention. Remove yourself from the space. Seeing how, why that keeps showing up in your environment. Sometimes it could be your music. So sometimes it could be the TV, the shows that you're watching. And it's not, take, it's not allowing you to get out of this feedback loop of presenting to you the same thing that you don't want to see. The dreams are like that. Take this out of the context of just the hood, the streets, wherever you're at, whatever situation you're dealing with physically, and see how... Oftentimes, the subconscious through the dream presents the worst case scenario for us. And it becomes very disturbing to go through that process. And you wake up and say, man, how can I stop having these bad dreams? And I commend my brother Sven for coming forward in his dream group and taking everybody through that process. And what he learned also from the Toltec dreaming 
And that's how to cleanse out. The same thing the woman is doing has to do with her womb at times, as we mentioned earlier with the Tantra, is the same thing that our mind, which is also a womb, it has to be flushed out and cleaned out sometimes and taken through a process where you start removing a lot of those distortions that are causing and are basically just no longer serving their no longer serving in their in that place. Everything has its place, even if it's just as a lesson. So um, this question is, I started the specialist train last year, but I didn't dive in. Well, I and it says uh, <laughs> I didn't dive in. I said I should have. Should I go through the course again or should I start straight in ambassador training? That has everything to do with where you're at personally with your life. Specialist training is free. So we put it there because it's zero really obligation. So you get a chance to really see and connect with the energy of sovereignty. That is designed, specialist training, ambassador training, sovereignty mentorship is, is designed around sovereignty and coming to the awareness how you need to be st get some stability going on with yourself. You need to know the riggings of the reality. So that's the entered processes. If you don't trust it, you don't want to invest any kind of energy or money into it. You go into there, it's free, and you get mental, spiritual, physical advice <laughs> from an adept level point of view. And then this then should let you know whether or not you should be jumping into sovereignty mentorship or not. That's what is put there. In sovereignty mentorship, for me, anytime someone is contributing energy, I'm going to, I'm, I'm in now, I'm turned on now. I'm going to do as much as I can to make sure there's more and more and more value. And I've exceeded what I believe is the mark of priceless at this stage. And even these premiums are just the formalities of making sure that energy is balanced properly. So it's there, but you have to decide in your life, what is it that, you know, because you can't do everything at one time. What is it in my life that I actually need right now? Sometimes that could be turning all of this off including Seven Bomar, and hitting a, 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 a place where nobody is and just sitting there with yourself. I had to do that. I didn't learn all of what I know now, especially the core of what I know, from listening to spiritual teachers. I did not read any of these new, fresh books on enlightenment. I was right. I, I had this thing right away that I just believed that nobody knew what was going on that was alive. That was my first thing. Like, if they did, we wouldn't even be living in this kind of world. I'm going right to the ancient. What does the ancient say? And I spent a long time, months on end, years actually, just working with that knowledge and making heads and tails of that and seeing how that applies to my life. And it was, it took time because I had to basically transition from a modern, if you may, futuristic mindset into an ancient ideal of existence and then bring those back together and balance. And that's when I came out of that cave. That's when, you know, I, I left the, okay, this is, you know, what happened. And I had no way of translating that to everybody else in the time that they were living now. That's where the compassion actually comes in because you don't just come in there with, y'all need to do this or not. The ancestors said this and this and this. You realize for a moment, listen, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to figure out how to communicate with these people that I love in the condition that they're in. I'm not trying to stand up in front of somebody just like I'm a pastor or a preacher and, and just dictate all day. I love to see other folks jump up and really start showing their uniqueness and expressing themselves. That's exactly what the platform was created for and continues to do. Look at, the, look at a lot of these pages that are on Secret Energy. They're just consistently highlighting others. Now, as I'm, because I'd be over here working on something else. Now I'm trying to find a universal code that we're going to be able to utilize to create structure within our lives. And while I'm doing that, I'm realizing, okay, it's time to get back over there. Now it's time to let's remove all of these these people that have been. I don't know what they're even doing right now. Let's create a consensus where the community is saying, "Hey, this is a person that should be there because we can learn from them." Not this is just somebody there because they had the most clicks or the most uh, they wrote one book 10 years ago that was great. But now they completely have deviated from the plan. We need to be able to make sure that we're updating like that in our community. And that's what these tools are designed to do. They're designed to allow us to organically 
be able to, to uh, tell each other where is the best space for us to go to get specific things. And so that's what I'm going to turn that into. Uh, Somebody is saying to speak closer to the mic. Thanks for that. Yeah, because I could come all the way back off this thing and it's, this ain't that kind of mic. So appreciate that. I know that was like an hour ago, though. <laughs> I know some people down here are like, get closer to the mic. Let me pump this up just a little bit. Um, okay, so final questions. Because we actually, we've hit the bottom of the question list. Okay, somebody's saying, I think Eric is asking, uh, can you speak on the cymatic software on Secret Energy? Is that something I can channel my creativity with and post it? Uh, yeah, I mean, cymatics, my exploration in cymatics was a fantastic journey. And I learned a lot there. Again, sound is shape is color. And for me, cymatics was so big beyond that $50,000 tonoscope that they have that shows you all the pack patterns. I wanted to find something that could give an example of what frequencies look like. And obviously that's what cymatic software is. It is a product though that not many are interested in, meaning so there's no real budgets tied into developing cymatic software 2.0. And because of that, it is what it is. You can put your frequencies in there. You can put your plate size in there. You can hit enter. You can hear those tones and you can see the designs that they create based on those variables. And yes, it's something that you can utilize because it allows you to infinitely create something. Uh, unlike again with uh, golden intonation where someone has specifically said, Hey, uh, you know, let's respect my, my intellectual property here uh, as an artist. So, um, Another question here is, I have a plate, six screws in my neck. Will this hinder a Kundalini experience? I've taken substances and gone in, but have yet to do so during meditation. Remember, LJ, <laughs> there are many that have not in meditation reached ultimate states of Kundalini without having six screws in their neck. This Kundalini experience you know what, now I think we're getting to something here. And, you know, I, I will have to admit that even when I came into this, it's all about unlocking Kundalini and enlightenment. However, after 10 years of seeing just how powerful real Kundalini is, as I mentioned earlier and what it's capable of doing, I don't think that should necessarily be the benchmarker everybody should be setting in their minds to determine if whether or not they've achieved certain stages of awareness or graduating the construct or whatever. Because Kundalini is a power and a force that it is expressing itself in a variety of ways. It doesn't mean that you're throwing up green slime with your hair all out on the edges, throwing lightning from your hands, and that's the sign of activation. This wisdom is really about how this energy rests and how you're aware of how to remain stabilized with this energy. So if you find yourself in meditation and you start feeling that deeper connection with yourself, who is technically saying that's not the level of Kundalini that you are supposed to be at? And that when you finally get to this grand idea of awakening of Kundalini, which we know also exists, that that will also match in time to when there's an actual use for that. Because what I started noticing also is when we create things, if there's no use for it, it just goes away. It goes to waste. So we bring big, bad, powerful Kundalini into a world and it's like, where is its place? This is also what I was saying before about how like the goal is to awake people, but what are we awakening them to? We didn't set up the school yet. We don't, we don't have a consensus yet. Every, you got self-certified teachers and instructors coming forth, saying whatever they want. We got 1,000 people over there, 50,000 people over there, 20, 250,000 people over there, everybody in their own direction. Each person 
saying their own variable or the uniqueness of the message, but not really understanding where the core fundamentals actually are. We need, a, we need in this case, a society. We should elect. Think about this. This is like, I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm like, man, conscious community needs to start electing a panel or a council of, 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 of elders. Not based on things like just age. Age does not mean elder. Based on, like elder is a tree, elder tree. It's based on how much wisdom you have about certain things. And we need to, you know, on all the stuff that we have and all the stuff that we do. And I'm also not talking about the one where just that one group gets to get in there and dictate who they're going to elect into these certain positions. And then now they're over here dictating to everyone where it's really like what we see even a mimicry of in this political elections. Where we start saying, well, who, who's representing us over here in alchemy? Who's representing us over here in diet? Like there's an extreme turmoil happening right now in diet. As I mentioned, some of us are coming 15, 20 years off of these vegan diets and realizing, yo, this is something's wrong. I don't have the stomach of a cow. I should have saw that before while I'm cramming all these vegetables into my mouth. Then you got this antithesis. Then you're not supposed to eat sentient beings. And then even the sentient beings are eating sentient beings. So it's like, whoa, where, whoa, let's get a council of diet, get the masters of diet in front of us, Really do the work and the test as a community. We have people that have been on certain diets for 20 years. Let me see you. Let me see what you look like. Smile. How do your bones feel? Lift this. And then get the optimal thing and then seal it. Once we, Because once you get it, it's a template. So you don't got to like, that's why I said the new thinkers can come in and, and, and their work could be to revise things. That's why in universities, they have theories. So you could come in, present your theory. But it doesn't mean everybody's going to start off right away with your theory. And, and try to gain foundation on your theories, right? So that kind of thing, like that's going to be productive because it's like, it, it grounds it. It's like, okay, but yeah, we have all this power from space and from the deep within and all this kind of stuff, but let's actually just bring in the things that we know in common sense. Let's not just go to the next thing or, and skip that. Okay, solidify that. Bring that in and put that somewhere and put people around it. That's the other thing. It's like put people there to service it. So to do that, you also have to have a certain level of knowledge about how to work, put, put people together to work. This is now a virtual environment. Everybody doesn't live in your city. Everybody can't come directly to your community. All Everybody can't fit in one community in one country anyway. So you would have to design something that works in, in between communities. You see what I mean? And, and this is like, that's common sense. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, like getting together in the council of common sense and getting those who just know how to finish something and go into action, put these drawing and chalkboards and all this stuff away and say, hey, but for us to make this a reality for these people who believe in this, we're going to start, we're going to have to start here. See, I'm used to doing that. I'm used to starting off with a blank sheet of paper or a blank screen and now having to build on every single level the thing that needs to work that we're all going to use. Not just saying, this is what we need. And then walking away like I'm all high and mighty because I just told everybody what we need. Like I'm the genius. Show me how we're going to get there then. You know what I mean? Like people want to live in a community together. Where's the money going to come from? You got that one person, right? They're the ones that maybe made it in life and succeeded somehow financially. Now everybody's draining them. Then you catch them on the new moon. Now they don't want to help anybody anymore because they're grumpy and angry. I don't want to spend more any money. You guys are all laying around. Nobody's really doing nothing. There's, real, there's a real world here. And so to build the components, we have already masters that have put these things together, even within the communal structure. Within even nations, you can see templates and blueprints there that show you why it even became a nation in the first place. So hopefully you realize that the phantom limb still applies just because what's going on with the what's going on. It just takes because that's our karmas. Right. The question was, I have a plate and six screws in my neck. Right. So those are our karmas. Those are the things that actually promote us to gain balance, gain dharmas. You see what I mean? So. That's just another thing to work through. That's something that is in the field that you need to transcend. And 
you having the opportunity to see how even within yourself, not your neck, all this kind of stuff, but the minuscule, because see, that's how it starts. It starts first. They created this, the chakras and things to take you through the process of experiences of awakening something. Right. So it's like courses are the chakras, right? They're, they're circles, they're, co they're courses, they're orbits. So still, ultimately, that's leading somewhere. So if you find yourself maybe without that course this life or without that part this life, it just means that you're going to have to fill in that blank and take yourself to the ultimate. What was the ultimate? The ultimate is that even when I'm rubbing my fingers together like this, there's space in between my fingers. You think that you're rubbing your fingers together but there's still some space in between there. And in that space, the infinite mother is there also, proving that it's everywhere and it can be touched anywhere. And so you don't, you don't start bringing yourself all the time into all of these criteria in order to be able to touch that. But again, that's, that's a process of coming into that awareness. Some people just want to start there. Yeah. All awareness right here. <laughs> it's like we can say that, but can you can you do that? Is that in your actions? And are those actions bringing forth their results? That's what I said is the difference again in knowledge. Knowledge is the artificial spirit. OK, that is what is, again, the 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 uh, left side of the brain. All this, not all this knowledge. And it's called the artificial spirit because people can get a lot of knowledge and imagine that they actually have achieved everything. <laughs> when it's wisdom, which generally comes through experience, that is connected to the achievement. The achievement is an action. You see what I mean? So, but they go together because if you think about thought, in Tantra, we learned that your mind, if your mind is not connected to what your body is doing, you're not into alignment. So this is simple. If you have you ever, you know, there's some mature folks here. There's, you know, folks here that have been in engagement, sexual engagement to others. You're in a sexual engagement with somebody and you're not thinking about it. Maybe you're watching TV and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, got that going on you'll notice that your arousal centers and all of this won't be even turned on because you're not even thinking about it. Likewise, you can actually be, so you can be in the action, but if you're not thinking about it, it doesn't, act, it doesn't activate the essence of the action. Likewise, you could be in the thought, but if you don't go into the action, then nothing, if you don't, action is rubbing it like, moving it, touching it. So if you never go in, you, so you could be thinking in your mind about this energy and the Kundalini and all this kind of stuff. But if you're not touching it, like you don't get into the dirt and touch the ground, you don't sit on the ground. You know what I mean? You, you never, you never, you don't activate it. So you see how they both go together and all of these societies are actually generally stuck. If they're polarized in between someone who is insisting that one of these is greater than the other when both of them need to be together. And that's the same thing that's manifesting in the reality with these messages that are like, oh, the woman is the greater one. Man is down here. It's all man's fault. You see what I mean? That's, that's an imbalance because man and woman are like are not the androgen. You're missing one component. So even when you want to blow the trumpets for woman on the planet, you would have to blow that same trumpet for man because woman and man are actually still not the androgen. And so if you make one of them greater than the other, then one's going to dominate the other. And when you dominate something, you can't bring balance into that. And balance unlocks that center column. So you see, it's like this is the process of when wisdom starts to really work in on the consciousness and show you, look, man. You can sit down with this and nobody, you don't got to take nobody's advice. You could just really start putting this stuff out in front of you and seeing what this stuff really means. And you'll come to your own truth and it'll hold because it's, it's just there. So 
Here's another thing. Another question here is saying. While listening to the golden intonation, what is the spinning I feel as I begin the meditation and throughout the meditation? The, the spinning is, is the energetic center within itself. And I guess I can't answer that beyond that. You know, like rest in that and, and actually tap into that. I mean, I'm glad that you're spinning. And that's what it is, is the energy centers respond to these. Uh, it's basically like a it's a frequency massage. It's like a, a perfect crescendo continuously happening and it. It massages and it coaxes the consciousness into the full spectrum awareness of what it is. Uh, and it's doing that with tones and vibrations, not really with words, proving again that there are more refined ways still to bring others into certain levels of, of balance and certain levels of, of consciousness within their being. This next question is, I experimented recently with psilocybin mushrooms and I experienced hours upon hours of laughter. Everything was comedy on another level for me with complete bliss. Is there anything that can be said about my spirit overall? I mean, I think you say it to yourself, like having a joyous spirit is rare these days. So you're seeing how rare your being is and achieving that again with as you keep going through your experience, because they've always showed that psilocybin is extremely instrumental for depression and things like that. So finally bringing yourself into the space where the substance, the medicine, the element, the entity teaches you how to make contact with it internally. So this means that even to a point where you only need a small amount or no amount before you're getting into that same experience because you've been able to actually dial into the, the frequency because that's, that's really what this stuff was about is about letting you f understand the frequency or understand how you got to that frequency and then you would be able to replicate it yourself and that's how the, the plants always became teachers for us. Okay, so we are indeed at the conclusion of questions today. I wanted to look at really briefly uh, just um, my notes. Okay. Also, um, these are some final thoughts. You know, there's a time to play and there's a time to be serious. There's a time and place for everything. And when we come into the temple, this is why even, you know, to, the, to this day, you know, you go into a temple, there's a certain level of reverence, there's a certain level of respect because it helps to keep the space consecrated. Like, you know, you don't get kids, you know, coming in there and, you know, roughhousing the place and knocking stuff all over and people coming in there, opening up their own stores and, you know, folks coming in there having parties and all that kind of stuff. And it's all going on, you know, in this space that is supposed to be used for consecration and, and an arena where we can get to, you know, higher levels of awareness. And so I mentioned this because a lot of times now with this, with the conscious community, it feels like everything is starting to become like a joke like entertainment, like the whole goal of this is to just be a part of this woke, you know, community that is on Instagram. And you have to realize that in the past that this is, this is what governed our lives. This is what actually made sure that we were able to progress and that we were able to stay on track. And that when we did really need some level of guidance and, and protection and encouragement and all those deeper things in life, that this is where we could go to find it. So basically what I'm saying is if we bring the foolishness and, the, and, the, and wanting to be entertained into the sanctum, this is not its place. And you have people that are now coming in and they just like, I'm trying to explain this to you, but it's just like they don't even respect any of this stuff. They're just like, mm, yeah, yeah, he's just saying what he's saying. Uh, who cares? Yeah, I mean, see, look at him, man, kind of looks funny. <laughs> and there's, do you think that when you walked into the ancient setting that that's what was going on when you walked into the great temple that folks was in there just, eh, whatever. You know, he say what he, they own soapbox. I know what he's saying. Look, I know this. So this is what they said was going to be somewhat of the danger of things like with YouTube and while everyone can kind of get up and even have some level of authority, that the danger of that was is that if there was, 
again, never any consensus, it would become where every person would feel entitled to actually jumping up and giving their opinion as if it was a fact. Then it would lead to the degradation of the institution anyway, because people would not know really what, where the boundaries were, where, where is the foundation at? So what we have to agree is as a tribe is that there is a space where we come in and we are very serious about what it is that we're, we're attempting to learn and even attempting to teach because our children and how they're growing up is very serious. It's like, if you got a man that's just playing around all the time, or you got a parent that's just playing around all the time, like they can't be serious. Nine times out of time, 10, they're not going to be able to support and take care of you either. What we are developing is something that is able to support and take care of people. Not everybody has the opportunity to jump on Instagram or YouTube and become some type of YouTube personality. Some people have five or six kids. Not everybody has time to uproot themselves and come and stay in your community or in your house or wherever you say they need to be. You bring extreme disruption into their lives with that kind of haphazardness. So again, responsibility. If we're expecting as a tribe to rise forth from this as anything stable, solid, serious, respected, because that's the other thing. If, if I can't respect you, or listen, if you don't respect yourself, how you expect me to respect you? If you can't respect yourself, if you can't take yourself serious, how do you expect me to respect you and take you serious? Likewise, if you want to come and bring the foolishness to me, make my house in disorder, make those that we're teaching, let's say our children, if you may, the neophytes, confused. In any tribe, if we got this uncle and this uncle is abusive, sexually abusive, whatever, megalomaniac, whatever, the other, the other brothers and sisters are going to come and say, this, this is not where you can do that at. We'll always be together. It's in the blood. With the uncle, I'm giving you an example here, with the uncle in the tribe that may be, you know, doing dangerous things, things harmful for the children, he may get kicked out of the tribe. We will always still be unified because it's in the blood. As I said earlier in this, this is not up to us to decide where we're unified, what, uh, whether we're unified or not. This is up to us to decide whether or not there is a boundary or a filter there to protect as you enter in closer to the truth and the center that what you find there is that. Because if it's not, if you're letting people into your holiest of holies that are playing around, they don't even take themselves serious. They're not doing any research. They're just babbling along, guessing. If you let them control your ship, it's going to crash. And the reason also why I'm here today is that I realize that, man, especially for this next three months, Maybe I really do need to actually be assisting everyone and making sure that they get some sound balance in these messages. Meaning that, again, I kind of like I got a lot of stuff going on. So even turning on this YouTube and getting on these videos and all this kind of stuff, if this was all about popularity, I'd probably be doing it every single minute turning this thing on. But y'all, if you notice, I haven't turned it on because I'm over here building something that is the solutions for things. But I'm seeing in the community as things kind of dwindle down into, like I said, the final hours. A lot of these messages that are that are present are like got the whole community like, so uh, where are we going? What do we do? We're, we're trying to get to something or grasp, get something. And it's like it's not there. And so I'm telling you that it is here. This channel on YouTube still only has 100,000 subscribers after 10 years. <laughs> Any other channel on YouTube that's been on YouTube for 10 years is sitting on 500,000, at least a million subscribers. So this still means basically that this, um, this message is only getting to a cert um, certain amount of people. We've always worked to try to get that to more people, but we're still really concerned about what are we getting to people? What condition are they going to be in when it comes to them? 
we have a luxury here that most of this stuff that I'm explaining right now, you understand because we have a consensus. We understand Kundalini. You could talk to people, they'd be like, Kundal what? <laughs> the masses don't understand even what the word Kundalini means. If you could do the math, the masses are in India. The masses are in China. And so, you know, you pound for pound still, they don't have an understanding of what that is. So overall, and that's why it's important to not just get blinded by your Facebook friends and your Instagram friends, which are in your circle. Overall, still, the awakening has yet to come really to humanity. And how that comes, though, really takes the beings that are bringing that to have the compassion to meet them where they are. That's what a bridge is. OK, that's the last thing I got to say. That's what a bridge is. Bridge is not way up here. Like if I'm if I'm coming across the bridge and the bridge, if I'm trying to get get across to the other side and the bridge is way up here, I need a bridge to get to that bridge. <laughs> a bridge is something that meets people where they are and takes them over the chasm. So that means that we got to think about where's everybody at? <laughs> where's their intellect at? A lot of intellect is pretty much at a six year old, six year old child or sixth grade, excuse me, a sixth grader. So does the message that we're delivering meet a sixth grader or does it at least take them from the point to, from sixth grade to graduation? And this is what I was saying about even enneology and these kind of things are designed to, let's start at step one. And even if you are already feeling like you're at step 10, You'll notice that there's things in there. It's like, well, yeah, I, I haven't created my, my dietary regimen yet. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, man, I forgot. Yeah, it's in the toothpaste. Or, yeah, I haven't addressed my water supply, really. Or, and there'll be something that you may have omit, omitted, and that's fine. There's so many details to this. It helps when we just have a, a map, a manual, a blueprint that just says, hey, here's some things that you may want to make sure that you incorporate into your regimen. And like I said, when that comes to somebody and they just understand it from that basic level, that gives them the opportunity to come through the degrees of the spine of their of their own chakra center and then meet the next stage of awareness. And that's what makes it a tutelage. Now, remember, universe is a university, so it's already designed like this. And some of these trials and these little tribulations that we're experiencing right now and like I said, are just designed to give us two things, discipline and discernment. Discipline, this is an art. This takes patience to learn self, to go deep within self, to start tapping into intuition, to follow your intuitions once you trust yourself and have it calibrated. All that stuff must come about. You need to learn how that operates. And then in discernment, Others are still trying to figure out their way too. you need to know when it's time for you to get ready to jump off that path because that person's heading in the wrong direction or stay the course because you see that that is actually what your discernment is telling you. That's what you should be doing. And as a tribe, we're generally eating the same thing spiritually. So this means that there's a lot of things that are going to be very similar about us. And as I said, What's happening right now is the, the main energy, if you may, our collective co-creative forces saying your affiliations. We right now are at this stage where we're like air balloons. OK. In an air balloon, you've got these big bags holding the air balloon down into the ground. When it's time to take off. You have to decide when you're going to let some of those release some of those bags to their place. Nothing is ever separate. But things need to be in their place. And if they're sitting right in your house, talking right in your ear, influencing where you're going, that's not where they need to be if they're not leading you into this higher uh, discernment and balance of truth. So what is truth? What is truth? That's why discipline and discernment is here. To truly be able to allow you to define the truth, which is in a template. It's not something you just make up. 
It is indeed, like I said, it's written in our start. It's written in the daily lives that we live. It's written in how we got here, the birth, you know, the, the, the gestation cycle, the conception periods. It's actually there. It's not something that we need to make up. We just have to be on point with having the ability to see it. So wholeness and balance vibrations, that took us probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, but it was definitely well worth the connection. I'm going to be forward. I think I'm going to really choose Instagram as a panel to start coming in on because I really like the interaction that I saw as possible there. Uh, this means I have this idea of what I call it's like three minutes and you come on. And the thing I like about Instagram is you can bring the person on the screen. You come on, you got three minutes to say whatever it is you need to say, uh, ask whatever it is you need to ask, whatever it is. And we, we have a timer right there and we hit it in three minutes. We connect. And then that way we give others an opportunity because if you imagine in one hour, we can definitely connect with quite a few beings. And what you'll still see, like we saw with energyology, is that we all are experiencing somewhat of the same thing. So once we find solutions as, you know, our sister Catherine was, what I was telling our sister Catherine earlier, you know, as we start finding these solutions, somebody will just be very instrumental in saying, look, let's template that. So that way, every time a person has that issue, we already have a solution for that. And then let's create a knowledge base <laughs> to where we have solutions to modern problems so everyone can move through their problems. You've had problems with money. Where's the money right now? Who's, where's our money masters at? Oh, money master, where's, where's the money at right now? Where do you, how do you go find out about the money? Well, I check Crunchbase because that's where all the money is moving. What is it saying? Well, everything is moving towards a technological thing. They're about to drop the digital dollar. Ooh, should I be scared of it? Absolutely not. Money will always be in existence on the physical plane. It pretty much determines the condition of the life that the person lives in. So if you can figure out how it connects to your energetic field, then you can live life after life after life or existence after existence being balanced. Because if you're not in debt, you're balanced. <laughs> That's exactly how it works. However, the society seeks to put everyone in debt just through ignorance. Every time something new is unfolding, the last people to get involved are the people who really could utilize the resources. And then by the time they get involved, something else new rolls out. We saw that happen in the real estate market. It was like, well, they weren't making money off the real estate. They were making money off the loans and, and borrowing money and understanding the concept of being able to float interest over years and understanding what that would accrue to and just math, basically. And what happened? By the time it was burnt out, done, now you get all these gurus, oh, buy investments, real estate, and it just tanks, it tanks everything. And even the residual incomes and all that are just not even realistic. Where are they at now? Get ahead of the curve. Where's everything at? This is transcending into technologies. That's pretty much, everybody's at home. Life is changing whether or not you wanted to change or not. There are people still, you know, looking for, like, remember when the computers came, there were people who didn't, I'm not accepting this computer. I don't want the computer. They lost their jobs. Something new is already here. So it's just, if you have a family, more importantly, if you have a tribe, you need to be on point with this kind of stuff. It doesn't mean you got to compromise yourself. You got to realize where, where, where does the higher principles fit in all of that? Because you can always bring that into that space if that's what you're resonating. And that's what I do. Like I come into the space and I say, look, this is, this is what I, this is what I need. This is what I feel like, this is what I need. So this is what I feel like that probably others have the same need. Do you have this need? Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? <laughs> money is not, physical money is not even scalable. With 9 billion people on the planet, there's not enough copper to make enough pennies with the people in the U.S., there wasn't even enough, there's not even enough copper to make the pennies because people think the pennies don't have any value. So they got a bunch of pennies under the couch, pennies in the car, pennies all over the place, and they can't produce any more pennies. So they're out of change. So then, so they already know this, this is a corporation. They're in a corporation. So they're in the business. So they're like, we got to go digital. So you got the next age coming in. It's not going to be the end of the world. We're just going to move to the age of air. From Earth, what's it going to be like if a person is all of a sudden on the Earth and now they're in the air? You need to make sure your ground is right. 
That's why when we say sovereignty 2020, sovereignty 2020 is about getting your ground. Sovereignty is a ground. It's a foundation. This is your friends, your family, your tribe, your job, all that stuff. This year, you got three more months is basically supposed to be settled and in place and we're going to take off. And that's why I got to come back into the space. I say, yo, there's some leeches and there's some people dragging on my name. They got other people thinking I'm affiliated with them and they're using that to get themselves ahead, but they ain't representing the tribe. You got to represent. And then if you don't know it, we'll teach it to you. If you want to become something, this is the place you do it in. I don't see anything really like that. I don't see it. So I said, this is a need. I needed that. And so I said, you know what? We got to create this. So I threw myself into the task. And just like if you're going to write a book of knowledge, you're going to be sitting there at the desk writing it. And everybody walking by, they may be condemning you. You need to get outside. Stop writing. <laughs> you need to be with, you know, lots of suggestions. <laughs> but when that book is done and they're growing from that and they're reading it and they're, it's building them, then they will realize, okay, yeah, you, thanks for working on this. Thank you for spending your time. That's what I have to say to all my elders. Thank you for taking the time to my ancestors. Thank you for going through this process and taking the time to give us the, the key fundamentals. The least we can do for you is use them. Thank you for giving us the blueprint. The least we can do, like, I didn't been through all of this I done ran through all these different dimensions and bought back the cream of all the knowledge. And people are going to go and, and, and just try something else on a whim. It's like, think about how we're honoring our ancestors. Our ancestors went through all of this stuff. Like, man, many of them even got banged up in the lower dimensions just to completely stretch this out for us and let us see and know what the potential is and how much power we have within to determine what our futures are. Is someone going to come and dishonor the ancestors by trying to bring in projections and distortions from fear and anxiety? Nah, man. No, 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 no. Not on my watch. And like I said, so this is that final quarter. This three months, we're going to ball. Like, and when I say, like, man, this is the last quarter of the game, I need to see all of it. And the reason why I say the last quarter is because, see, in 2021, what we know as working, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Whatever is the evolution of work is what we're supposed to be doing. This is the final time for working. And what you're supposed to be working on is the things that are going to allow you to be sustained when you go into the air. The air is you need to be te you need to have a tether or something that is sustaining you when you go up because you're going up. <laughs> and as we've seen going up, you know, some people I love I want to go into this Kundalini. I want to fly off in this plane. But what we talked about was is that it's a necessity, though, that you realize where your foundation is and where your roots are. So that's where you are now. So let's finish investing this time as the universe has us still on Earth in that in that wavelength, because we already know it's planning to take us up. It's planning to take us into a, a, a higher awareness, if you may. But the lesson is, are you stable and do you really know who you are? Do you really know that you create the future? You should never let nobody write your future. Your ancestors only wanted the greatest from you. Nothing external can come against you. You're immortal. You live in an infinitesimally small construct yourself as a being that can't even be measured. Nothing can smash that, step on that, stop that. <laughs> And when we span, we now in these big gelatinous bodies now, when we do that, we can't forget that where we came from and what we truly are in order to maintain this field, maintain this tribe. Do not bring this instabilities, this I don't know, this confusion, this misalignment. Man, be 
understand when you come into this temple, you have a responsibility now. You may have been playing it. There's folks still going to play with it, but what are you doing? You have a responsibility now as an elder. Cosmos has chosen you to be in this elder position now as we're going to go through this transition. You, what is the elder's responsibility? An elder is a pillar to hold up, to be stable. Give us a stable foundation. Don't make a shake. Like I got, again, people coming to me confused and scared and all this kind of stuff because of what people are saying. That means you're, you're shaking the foundation. We're building and stabilizing the foundation and leveling it. That's what this whole affiliation thing is now is I'm going to level this thing. And I'm going to take this site that we built together and I'm going to make sure that on these pages of community, connection, that it's filled with the beings that are on alignment with themselves and their higher self and the blueprint of what it showed us and taught us. Ain't, ain't, aliens ain't coming, Doc. <laughs> you can't destroy anything immortal. If you're trying to figure out when a destruction of humanity is going to be, you're going to be looking for a long time. We cannot be destroyed. If you're waiting on a specific date, you've put yourself into a queue. Right now, we make the time. 2012, line up now. December 21st, Great Awakening, whatever, now. Do you think you got masters waiting on specific days before they're going to bring themselves into the great awareness? What if that day doesn't come? What if we go beyond that date and you find like they did in 2012 where you just roll into the next day? And then also realize that these people in this media, they're feeding on you. They're feeding on all of this stuff. They know this. They, they watch this stuff. They're advisors. They call them script authenticators. Their script authenticators are watching channels on YouTube from conscious speakers, even myself, and then coming back and remixing all that stuff inside of Netflix. Then here you go watching it, and you're like, you know what? They know the truth. They resonated. And it's like this is a copycat scheme. They're just taking the knowledge. They're taking the knowledge from Santos, taking the knowledge from, from Pierre, taking the knowledge from, from all these different people. And then they spin that up into the most fanciful, <laughs> non-balanced, totally, you know, it's just entertainment and entrainment. A broad cast as a casting of a spell, a broad cast, very far and then some are being enveloped in it. And that's what I said. You have to stay on point, though. You got to know if you're being enveloped in it. Like a lot of these folks, they're so haughty now. They can't, you can't, they're, they're unreproachable. You can't even say that they're wrong. <laughs> and it's like, yo, that's how we sharpen each other. Steel, sharper, steel, steel. <laughs> and so that, and, and again, it helps because I was getting sharpened all the time from the elders when I first came into this. They were hitting the gavel on me all the time. And I got tired of someone coming to me, telling me and checking me about things that I was saying that I didn't completely know all of what I was talking about. So I said, you know what? I'm going to stop talking until I find some kind of blueprint or something. So that way, if they're, if they're challenging me on this, then they be challenging themselves. And I went within. That's how I found the superior brachium. That's how I saw the ovary shaped like the ram over in the pyramids. That's why all of the stuff I realized was all in the body. That's why I realized why I came, that word understand came to me about inside rather than overstanding. Now you way the hell out there. How are we going to apply that? Now you're understanding. You're way under there. You're, di you're dismal. You're below. You're feeling less. Understand. This is where the balance is. It starts with an I. That's that sushumna column, that center. And then again, when becoming aware of that, now working through the process of deprogramming myself out of what I that was what was contrary to that. So that way I can be confident in the things that I'm actually doing. I'm not guessing. This is not guesswork. When I say 
this is what's happening. It's really what's happening. Not because I said so, but because there are a myriad of resonances and components that say that same thing. That's as above, so below. Then you have discernment. That's what it was with any, any system of knowledge. It had something in it that you can query, that you could divine to let you know the truth. Just to let you know also that you don't you may not know the truth. You may come out thinking you know the truth. That's how kids are. They think they know every damn thing. I know how to do it, mommy. And walking right into the middle of the street. <laughs> and cars coming and everything. You see what I mean? So there is that phenomenon where kids think they know everything. So then there must be that point where the elder comes in and says, but this is what it is. And even when they rebuttal, but how do you know? Go to the school. <laughs> Go into the great sanctum and see what the masters left. They already told you how this is going to end and begin and end and begin again. And most importantly, they told you exactly how much power you had in the entire process. And how you can form, shape and fashion your reality. And how and that's what the secret The secret got paid almost billions of dollars just to come and tell everybody that they were ma they were manifesting their own reality. If that wasn't true, they wouldn't have been able to make a billion dollars off of something like that. So where does that cut off? It doesn't. That's why I'm not buying into what people think. If it's a doomsday, if it's terror, if it's trauma, I'm not buying into that. Now, all the people that are going to buy into that, I don't doubt that they may experience that. But this is a big world. There are places in the world that have never been touched. They, there's no frequencies or vibrations of what you would say is distortion even there. You look at Africa. Africa is so big, you can get confused and think Africa is what you keep seeing on TV when they show you them villages. Africa is huge. There's places that nobody's ever even been. You can't even live. Even in Japan, there's, there's mountains that nobody's ever been on. There's areas that you can't even get to. So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm expressing to you is, is that if you open up a wavelength of complete harmo harmonics and that's where you want to be, if everything is in chaos, it's just a, chaos is just not in that space. And the world allots that. It has many places that are not in chaos. And sovereignty also is the big key because it's like you can just go to that place, become sustainable, and harmonize yourself into that field. But you will have to master certain things. That's how I tell people. It's like, you can't master money. How do you think you're going to master highest levels of consciousness? Current. Because those are the same principles. And the same reason why you can't handle money is the same reason why you can't handle Kundalini. Same reason why you're backing away from that is the same way you, reason why you're backing away from this. And that's what the meditations do, because as you're sitting into yourself, it starts showing you this. It's not somebody that needs to teach you and tell you. It starts showing you. Then you go through the process of determining whether you want to listen to your higher self. Where do you want? Because then you'll, you'll still disobey. You'll go do something stupid and reap the repercussions. But are you learning something? Will you be able to use that? That's why I said that's wisdom. Now that I had that experience, so should I listen to my higher self? I probably should just keep listening to my higher self. Then you sit down with your higher self. Like, higher self, so how did you learn all this? <laughs> well, there's a template. There's a blueprint. Surely the template is the temple. And you're on the tutelage. That's the invisible college. It's where when you decide that you're finally ready to come out of recess Playing around, recess, recess is to go backwards. To, you're out there playing around when you're ready to get serious about this because you feel like that now it's time for you to take on the role of an adept or an adult. That now you're going to put all those toys away, that play play, and you're going to come in here on the real principles of how this works. And guess what? The ancestors are waiting. <laughs> They're immortal. So it's not like they left you. It's not like they're not here, and it's not like they're not everywhere. Our great mother is everywhere. And guess what? Also, to everybody else that may not find it as this is their time and opportunity, it'll come. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about 
billions of people not doing the right thing or what you think is the right thing. Their time will come. I asked about this. So what about everybody else that doesn't come into this level of awareness? This was in a riddle of what is chosen. I started asking this question to myself, like, what is the chosen? I never liked the whole concept because it seems like when somebody starts thinking that they're the chosen one, we have some issues. Most high, higher self. What is the chosen? It said. Time. I said, oh, man, come on, man. Time. And then I got it. The, the beings that are ready, it's just because it's time. <laughs> and those that are not, it's just because it has, it's, it's not time yet. But as they keep going through the course, <laughs> their time is going to come. And then they're going to be chosen. So chosen is not something that just elevates a person over another person. It's just a process of time. And that we can choose <laughs> even to actually let that time be now rather than some other date in the future. And it was simple as that. And then, of course, I watched the external version. I got this external version. Like, everybody thinks it's 144,000 only chosen people. And it's like, okay, that's what happens every time it goes outside and someone tries to use it to elevate themselves. It gets distorted because that process itself is the art of distorting truth. So time so when I see someone that, and that could be very therapeutic for you, because when you see someone just throwed off, maybe a family member or something, you just realize this is from what I just learned about where we need to be and where they are, they are not going to be getting there. And then you may go into this whole emotional and expressions and all this kind of stuff, trying to make them and force them. Look, set your affiliation and trust that in time, it'll all come out in a wash. That's what I'm saying. Like, as time keeps going, you're going to see who everybody is. You're going to see what all is going on. You're going to know what's up. And that's why I trust the process. And then while that's happening, I'm not just sitting there watching. I'm being. <laughs> I got stuff that I need to work on. You got stuff that you need to work on. The kids got things that they need. You know, the women got things that they need. Like now Tantra and an art of how us being able to clear some of these sexual traumas and these imperfections in the reality that have been so traumatic to our psychological aspects, all that stuff still needs to be addressed. So this is what this is. This is a multidisciplinary. It's a place where you come to learn about yourself through all variants. And this is why, again, it's necessary that we actually have that blueprint because then it'll give, it gives us a guide as far as what we are going through and where we're going. So thank you again, tribe. That's all I have for today for everyone. I will be in tune soon. I'm glad the broadcast came through fine. I will upload this on YouTube to ensure that it gets there and look forward to those Instagram builds uh, for those of y'all that do use or for tribe that uses Instagram. I'm on there as AstroQuest. Uh, you could look forward to me jumping on even this week on those three minutes. You know, let's jump on together. You know, let's let's connect and, you know, and let's get more of this knowledge and awareness out there. But also let's get it in a way where and this is why I'm, you know, putting some frameworks around it. An ode to just how much order really assists. You see this recording? It's two hours and 30 minutes. The probability of a person going through this entire recording is virtually minuscule. We're definitely giving out uh, a lot of props and, uh, and, and, and love to those that are in the tribe now, breaking these videos apart into smaller concepts so others can digest them. But it's going to be a lot easier for us if you just got this three minutes and we're going through that. And then you can send that to somebody and say, this is where this was addressed already. And so that's always what we're doing is looking to be more efficient in this sovereignty and looking to continuously stay on the level, not just allow anything to come through the filters. That's even a lesson in life. If you just let you listen to anything, if you just look at everything and you just eat everything, you're going to get sick. 
So it should be no different than these conscious leaders and all these people that we're listening to. We need to realize, like, is this stuff nourishing or is this stuff getting us sick? If you feel anxiety, if you feel fear, you don't resonate. If you feel that moment of lack of resonance, it's getting you sick. So you need to isolate if this is getting you sick because you just, you know, you're still in your total rebellion and you're not trying to listen to this, which probably you wouldn't even be listening to conversations like this. So it probably wouldn't be that. So I'm just saying you, that's your discernment. You jump on a line, you hear somebody's message, especially these days right now. It's September the 1st, 2020, and it starts giving you anxiety, fear, depression, no solutions, solutions that you can't even accomplish right now. You got to go and move way over somewhere else. You got to uproot your entire family. And that ain't it. <laughs> that puts you in despair. Everything you need is right in here. Those with applications, you can start deploying them right away. Also, they address from the root. Like I said, the, the bridge starts first on the bottom. What are a lot of people dealing with? Finances. It's an issue right now. It equates to how people are feeding their family. Even if you're talking about supplements and things, it equates to how they would be able to buy those supplements. So what is divine masculine? Support. You're going to go and find a way for the women and the children to be able to feed themselves and the brothers in the, that are in there to be able to feed themselves. So we did that. I'm telling you now, the money markets are there in the technological cryptocurrencies there. You can watch the numbers. You're seeing it. Done. I don't got to sit there and worship cryptocurrency. People have so much fear about everything. I don't, I'm just telling you where the money is going. Just like if back in the day, I could have told you, hey, it's all in gold. It's going to go to gold. And you could have been sitting there playing around with brass and seen the results of doing that. And it would have went on. Things will continue to go on. Community and connection. Tribe. Very important these days, especially since the mind can beat up on you if you get into a corner with it. Sometimes you just feel like, man, nobody really understands where I'm coming from and all this stuff. And this has happened on the news. You turn on the news and then, you know, turn on your spiritual teacher and all this kind of stuff. And it's just there's no stability there. This is what tribe is for, because that's what tribes are in real life. They, they give you stability. You, you feel at home there. You feel like that there's, there's, there's your brothers and sisters there. So we're just reinstilling those same components that we always had. We're putting them back. We're repairing them. Also, like I said, communication, communication in the community. That's why it's called community. So if we can't all talk to each other. If I can't tell you, hey, brother, you know, you, you, you just, you're, you're losing your balance. And because you, you're a leader and the dictator, that's, it's, it's got to be horizontal. The pyramidal thing works on some stuff, but it doesn't work in a community like that. Even the greatest elders sit down in councils and they, they all talk and they discuss things. But like I said, if we're all living in pretty much the same wavelength, Generally, there is already been a refined way to accomplish everything. It's just about whether we're listening. Are we listening to our elders? You see what I mean? So I just addressed the three big things. One, what I just call the God within, understanding. Where's God at? You know, what's going to happen when we die, right? Spirituality. The second big thing, love connection. Who's with me? Who am I with? Where's my tribe? Where's my family? Three, money, finances, sovereignty. How am I supporting everything? How am I making my way in the world? What am I contributing? How am I building and where are my resources to build? Those are the three aspects of life. All of those are very tough topics. And that's why it's great again to have the blueprint. Because when you're going through 
something so important like your divinity, your sovereignty, and your relationships. Those are subjects way too vast for you to be guessing. So that's the benefit that we have. That's the gift, wholeness.